everyone and thank you for coming to the Rebels Masterclass. It's really great to see you and thank you so much for attending. We're here tonight to talk about and talk to the wonderful Alex Hart but before that I've got a couple of announcements so if none of you used this before this is a Zoom webinar which is different from normal Zoom um, which means that we have permission to turn on your mics if you want to ask questions but we recommend you use the Q&A function and the chat function if you've got any questions to ask as, as it'd be great to get your involved and get your views on what's going on. We run these sessions every Thursday and we, we really recommend that you can sign up to all, all the others. We've got a really great mix going on for the next couple of uh, weeks. We've got everything from building giant puppets to how to produce big events to even Chicago footwork, which is amazing dance movement that started in Chicago. Um, so get, get on them. But this is actually the first of our Rebels program, our Rebels music program, which is dedicated for 15 to 25 year olds looking to break into the music industry from everything from production managers to producers to sound engineers to musicians and performers. And one of the wonderful practitioners that's working with us is the amazing Alex Hart, who are, who's, will hopefully turn on her video right now. Um, I'll give Alex a bit of an introduction. Hey, there she hey. is. Hey. Um, who's going to talk all about her amazing EP tonight? But I'm going to give you a bit of context for her. So, Alex, I live in Plymouth, and she's been a professional musician for 15 years. She's been lucky enough to play in loads of legendary places from the UK, USA, Europe, and tour with Jeff Rotel, Martin Barr, and recently with Seth Lakeman. Um, she was signed, which was 18 years old, to a small label and released her debut album on this day, which had regular airplay on Radio 2 and local BBC radio stations. In the summer of 2013, Alex was released a cover on Angie Stone's Wish I Didn't Miss You, which went to number two in the dance charts and was supported by Pete Tong on Radio 1. And during lockdown, unfortunately, all the tour was cancelled, but we'll get on to that. Uh, but she has been wonderful to work with us and come and give her amazing skills to all of you tonight and also deliver loads of workshops that are coming over the next month. So check out the Rebels Music website, which I'll post later about that, because there's some amazing workshops that Ali's leading on with the rest of the team. But tonight, she's going to talk about her amazing covers EP that she released over lockdown and recorded in that very room she's sitting in right there. It was a room, right, Ali? I'm it was, right, right here, yeah. It's amazing. Right there, which is called <laughs> Under the Covers, which can be bought on Bandcamp, which is a fantastic covers album that I was listening to on my walk on the way back, and I've been listening on many walks. It's very chillax music. So she's going to talk about how she recorded that. I'm going to disappear because nobody wants to hear from me, and I'll be back later. So I'll hand over to the amazing Alex Hart. Wow, what an introduction. Thank you, James. <laughs> um, it's quite crazy to hear your life story from you know over zoom uh but i really appreciate that it's quite nice to remember what we do for a living during this time um so yeah it's really great to be a part of this thank you for um the opportunity barbican theater are amazing um and they've saved me basically from going absolutely stir crazy during a lockdown being a musician with <laughs> all my tours cancelled and yeah just basically yeah like going crazy so when the pandemic hit i had a few jobs um i started working in the covid call center which was quite interesting i think i've still got a bit a bit of ptsd from that <laughs> and um and then i started working in a cafe which was great um i really enjoyed that i like hospitality um then i worked in a restaurant and then i just thought you know what i want to teach i want to try and teach guitar so I started teaching um, just online at home, one to one on Zoom, which was quite difficult. I'd never taught before. I have no training. I, I taught myself how to play. I um, basically just kind of went back through my brain and thought, what can I find in there that other people might find interesting? And trying to put that onto paper was really difficult, but it worked. Um, and from there, I think that was kind of how working with the Barbican Theatre evolved, which was great. And working with them and all the other practitioners, I've learned so much. Um, so if you're watching this and you're thinking about signing up to something, the Barbican Theatre is the way forward. That basically, in my opinion, the only people in Plymouth that are doing something during this time and able to do something. You know, it's, it's a difficult time, but it's free and it's fun and. There's some great people there. So that's my first point. Do something, go there, take advantage of what they can offer you because they've they've offered me 
you know, it's, it's, it's a miracle really for me. Um, so yeah, basically what James was saying, I'm a, I'm a musician. I've been a singer songwriter for 15 years now, basically. Um, and I recorded an album when I was 17, 18. It was very pop. Um, and at the time I was so young, I didn't really have much of a say over what it was and what it turned out to be just because of my naivety. Um, but it was all, you know, good things, uh, lots of industry people, which you probably hear that word quite a lot. Um, and I'm now 29. So that's, you know, it's a big gap. Um, in that time, you know, I was signed when I was 17. I, I was up in London doing things, you know, um, big gigs, big album launches, things like that. And the album was great, but it didn't really do that well. Um, uh, you know, a label signed it in America, which was awesome. But again, you know, it, the amount of money that was spent on it through investment and investors and, and bigger names, uh, it was just such a shame because I feel like it was wasted. And I think that's kind of been the reason as well why I decided to do what I'm doing at the moment. But I'll get to that obviously later on. Um, so after the album, I um, I left all of those guys behind. Um, I kind of moved on from it. I think they got bored as well. Um, there are a few fallouts as there always are. Um, and yeah, I decided to tour. So I, I found um, the Jethro Tull link with Martin Barr, um, who's, who, he won a Grammy Award for one of the best guitar solos in the world. Um, he's now in his 70s and he still tours the world, which is amazing. So I, I met him and uh, toured Europe with him two weeks after meeting him. And that was probably about six years ago. So I, since then, we've toured America, we've toured the US um, in like a huge way, like all of the southern parts, all of the eastern parts. Last year, we were supposed to go on six tours with him, <laughs> um, some in South America, which I was absolutely gutted about, obviously. Um, so yeah, that happened. That was like a progressive thing. Uh, in that time as well, I decided to record my own EP, which I wrote and recorded in Plymouth with my friend Josiah. He's got a studio called Momentum Studios, some of you might have heard of. Um, and I've, I've just been gigging, basically. I've been a working musician. I've just worked really hard. Every venue I can, I, I try and play there. Um, I try, you know, I've done the gigs for free. I've done the gigs for exposure, um, <laughs> that people say. Uh, you know, I've, I've driven up and down the country by myself to play, you know, to nobody or to play to a few people or to support an artist that's not really worth supporting. You know, I've, I've done, I've got a lot of, um, a lot of history there, which I think is great because it's shaped me. And I feel like I've, I feel like I've worked up the ladder and almost, you know, in music, there's not really a promotion. There's not really a, um, you haven't got a boss that can help you step up the ladder. You've just got to do it for yourself. But I think I've I've learned the hard way um, and I'm really grateful for it. I think it's given me a lot of insight and um, a lot of grounding um, just to make money out of music, you know, but enjoy it. Don't see it as a, um, don't see it as like a chore. You know, it is a business, it is a job, but enjoy it. You know, that's the main thing. Um, so more recently, I've been working with Seth Leitman, which has been really great. We've done an album with him. The last tour I did before lockdown was with Seth. Um, and at the moment, we're working on a new album of his, uh, which is, yeah, sounding great. Um, and at the moment as well, I've just obviously released Under the Covers, which is my covers album, which I'm going to show you today. Um, but at the moment, I'm working on, again, more material because it's just so easy with this setup at home, the place I'm sat now to do that. Um, even if you are making demos, you know, at the moment I'm making demos so that I can take them to my friend Josiah in the studio, and then we can work on it, you know, in, in a more professional way. But this setup is just absolutely, it's just key, especially in a pandemic. It hasn't cost me like much at all. I have borrowed things from people. Um, you know, you'll be surprised what friends have got in their garage or <laughs> in their car sometimes. Um, yeah, so um, going back to record companies, I wanted to talk a little bit about that because 
a lot of um, artists these days always say, well, you know, you need to be signed. Um, you need to have a record company behind you to do anything. And I just don't think that's true. Um, and I think a lot of musicians nowadays don't think that's true either. You can have, you can, you can make music yourself as long as you're savvy to a certain extent with social media, um, with just an online presence, you might have to spend a little bit of money here and there on sort of sponsored posts and things like that. Um, you can do it yourself. You, there's ways, obviously recording music at home and then sharing it. You can do that yourself from this computer that I'm looking at at the moment. Um, you can get on Spotify by yourself. You don't need a label. Um, and I think unless you're going to sign with a huge label like Sony or um, you know EMI or something, there's just no point because actually most of the time they take most of your money um, and then you owe them for years. <laughs> I just, yeah, I don't personally, as a creative person, I don't, I wouldn't want someone like that to have ownership of what I do. You know, I'm, I'm not a big shot star. Um, you know, I, I live in Plymouth and I, I gig and I'm lucky enough to tour with all these people, but you know, for what I do, you know, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not the EMI standard, but, um, so I wouldn't sign with anyone unless it was big shot people, but, um, yeah. So I'm just going to talk to you now, like while I'm sat here, I can just chat and chat and chat, and then we'll get through to looking at what I've got um, around me. Um, but going back to releasing music, so um, licensing your work, once you've recorded your song um, or your album or whatever, you're going to need to license it. Um, so the best way and the, the way that I've been doing it is through a website called Easy Song Licensing. Um, and ditto music so you, you pay um, like a subscription it's really cheap and if they're your own songs it's like it's ridiculously cheap but because I had cover songs on my last album I did have to pay um, more of a fee because obviously I'm covering other people's work so I have to make sure that I've paid my way and I you know I've paid for the songs basically I haven't written them I've done my version of them um, but when you when you um, sign up with these licensing companies, they generate codes. So if you're going to put them on uh, Spotify, if you're going to put them on iTunes or on a CD, they, they come with this, I think it's called an IRSC code or something like that, ISRC, I'm pretty sure. Um, and basically when your song gets played on any of those platforms, CD, um, Spotify, anything or on the radio, for instance, it basically just something happens. I don't really quite know what, um, but that goes back to your royalties. If you're, you need to sign with a royalty company as well. Sorry, I'm like babbling here. Um, it, it basically comes back to you. So any money that any time that's played, that generates a little bit of income that gets sent back to you it's registered to you so it could be played anywhere in the world but they have to legally if you've got that code send you the the funds so it's it is vital that you do that um again talking on to that make yourself a member of prs um because performing rights society i think it's like 70 quid to, to start up this is if you're, you know, you might not want to release any music, you might just want to make music, but this is, um, it, it's just the, the, the first thing you should do, because this is how you get all your royalties sent to you. It goes through PRS, um, and they send you a check every quarterly, I think, quarter quarterly part of the year. Um, and again, that's linked to easy song licensing. It's linked to everything. It's like the hub. It's like the Facebook, the social media of uh, music industry. So just three things, PRS, um, easy song licensing and ditto music, ditto, you know, spelled the way you think it is. Just, just look them up. Um, they're pretty self-explanatory when you get there. Um, oh, well done. Uh, yeah, you posted that in the chat. That's great. Um, I'll keep that one up there as well, actually. Um, so yeah, so if you're gonna release music onto a disc, which is a great idea. It does cost a bit of money, but it's worth it. Um, there are some really good companies around. I personally use 
a company in Plymouth, um, and they are called DMS, Digital, no, Disc Manufacturing Services, Disc Manufacturing Services um, in Plymouth. They're really reasonable. Um, I've just ordered 100 CDs of my new record, um, and I think it's about 250 quid. Um, so I just recommend it if you even just want a small batch, they do bigger batches and it's not much more. I just wanted to make a really limited amount. Um, but they're great. They're really easy to work with as well. So, and obviously it's nice to do it, keep it in Plymouth as well. Um, <clears throat> if you're going to release music online and you're thinking, you know, Spotify takes, um, all of your money, basically Spotify is great to get heard, but it just it's just not worth it if you want to make money out of what you do and you should because you know it's great to do it for fun but it's also you know if you're if you're thinking of starting a career in music you need to be earning from it um so i would say that Bandcamp is a really good um a good way of releasing music because they do take a slight fee i think it's like 15 percent or 10 percent um, and if you're going to get payments through PayPal, PayPal will take a little percentage as well. Um, for instance, my album has gone onto there and that's how I've been selling it digitally as a download. It's really easy. And they, they explain everything to, to all the people that go on there. So you don't have to worry. You just shove it on there and forget about it. And they just do the rest. Um, but they, I think, yeah. So if I put my album on there, I think I, I put it there for 10 pounds. I probably get about seven pounds 80 from it, something like that. And it's still, you know, it's a bit of a pain, but it's actually the best way <laughs> um, to earn money from it. If I put it onto um, iTunes, I get way less, like it's, it's crazy. And Spotify, I get probably 0 0.1 of a penny, which is madness. Um, hopefully Spotify is gonna fizzle out one day, but we're all, we're all part of the game. Um, so yeah, I've gone through that. Um, obviously, yes, yeah, it's, it's nice to sell merch as well. You know, when you've got merchandise at your shows, it's great having CDs there, even like Bandcamp, you can give people codes so that they can go and, um, download your work. It's really handy. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna talk you through the studio gear that I've got, which is so simple. I'm going to try, hopefully you can, you know, I was going to do it on my iPhone so that I could kind of show you around the room, but I think it will be okay. But you can see this microphone here. Can you see the one that I'm talking through uh, right in the corner. This is the first microphone and the only studio microphone I own, actually. It is a Rode NT1A. And as you can hear, it's quite clear, hopefully. Um, and it came with this pop shield as well, which is really handy. I think the whole thing was a hundred and about 150 quid. Um, and it's just top quality. A lot of people with home studios say that's what you should get. And I, I swear by it. I've, I've recorded my whole album with that one microphone, uh, every guitar part, every um every percussion bit every vocal everything the same thing um so yeah that's your first step get a really good microphone but it's not that expensive um the next thing um is is an interface and i don't know if i can really show it to you because of the position here but i've got a focus right scarlet solo interface and it's a box basically like that and it's red and it's got an input for your uh, jack lead and an input for an XLR for a microphone. So just two inputs um, and it's so easy to use. It just plugs into your microphone or your guitar and then into your computer and, and then obviously connects to your speakers. Um, but that's, it's just necessary that like you need it to do anything. Um, it's, it's the connection between you playing music and going into your, um, into your computer. And obviously you need a computer. Um, so I'm guessing that most of you will have one of those cause you're watching right now, unless you're on your iPhone. Uh, that's the, the big thing. Um, and some studio speakers, you don't have to have them, but it's definitely nicer with them. I actually borrowed some off, uh, 
a mutual friend of probably a lot of yours is called Lee Chance. <laughs> uh, so they're not mine. I haven't paid for them. They are quite expensive. You don't have to have expensive ones. You could have any speakers you want. It depends what kind of quality you want and how much you want to spend. You know, you don't want things to be costing lots and lots of money. This is the whole point of having a, a studio at home. But these ones are less this and they're, they're kind of they're about this big. Um, I've got one this side, I've got one this side, and it, again, they're just plugged into my computer through the Scarlet interface um, so that when I play music back, um, anything I've recorded, I can put it through there and I can get a really good sound um, and a true sound. So um, it really helps. And I record with headphones as well, so I can kind of switch between. Um, bearing in mind, guys, you know, before um lockdown i had no idea how any of this stuff worked and it's just fiddling about i, I probably spent about half an hour on it and i worked it out you know it, it may seem complicated but it's really not um my setup is so basic um and i know that it, again it might sound like it's not but it but it really is um so yes on my checklist of things um right okay i'm gonna share the screen with you now so i'm gonna show you um a little bit of what i've done um i'm kind of like a before and after so share screen okay hopefully you guys can see that uh this is my my logic program that i work with um Again, this is Logic Pro X, which I think is the, the latest one, I'm pretty sure, maybe the second to latest one. Um, but here are my tracks. So I, I, I make tracks by pressing this button here. Um, obviously, you can. this is me talking at the moment. I'm coming through one of the channels. Um, so I make tracks, uh, and then basically I can either loop them. So I've made a kick drum here, and I can loop them here which makes it in time uh you know so that's quite a really effective way of doing it i've got a tambourine which i've just recorded myself um this is a a, a shaker that i've taken from um like a little sample uh, my acoustic guitar uh, which is here um, a, a second acoustic guitar and then i've put like some little harmony guitar harmony parts on here so sort of like little um, this looks quite complicated, but uh, to be honest, I don't really know why why it looks like that. I think it, I've just done a few takes and it does that for you. So I don't get confused by that. Um, again, another harmony, my bass, when I recorded bass. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. Main vocal here. These ones are probably harmonies, I would have thought. Audio 7, Audio 8. Um, Oh, more than a woman belt. Wow, giving it beans there. Um, I, I did a lot of work on this track, but what I did is just track them up, like just layering and, you know, because it's just me. I haven't sent it to anyone uh, and, and a harmony here. So um, what I thought is I'll play you some of this just um, so that you can hear. I'll kind of go from here, really, where, where everything's coming. And this is a, a cover that I did of um, More Than A Woman by the Bee Gees. And again, this is really basic. I haven't got any effects on here. Um, this is my mixing desk here. And, and as normally, if you've got effects, it would it would show here. You can kind of like, um, you know, move things around um, to, to give it more depth and whatever. But I've just left it completely flat because I sent it to Josiah and I thought I'm going to let him do all that stuff. I didn't really know what I was doing. So I just wanted to play music and record it. That's it. Um, so hopefully, hopefully that's a little bit straightforward for you. It does look complicated. I don't want it to be for you guys, but until you until you get it and you try it for yourself. Um, you know, that's that's how you're going to learn, really. But um, here you go. It's a really dry, you know. Now the tambourine 
emotions coming in here. So yeah, you kind of get the gist. Hopefully, hopefully you could hear that. Um, I also wanted to show you, so that's obviously like the really stripped back version. Um, and this is how it came out when I sent it to Josiah. So if I kind of zoom on here, um, after he'd put all the delicate parts on it, uh, this, is, this is what came out. Fall in love with you again. This is the only way that we should fly. This is the only way to go. And if I lose your love, I know I would die. Oh, say and always be my baby. We can make it shine. We can take forever, just a minute at a time. that trusty tambourine yeah so there you go I won't obviously play the whole thing but you can hear the difference you know this is so basic um, you know there's not there's no reverb on there there's nothing and and you know after if I'd spent ages playing with this um, you know, I, I would be able to do that, but because I knew I was going to spend a little bit of money um, with Josiah, I, I kind of left it as flat as I could. Um, and I, obviously, as I've gone on, um, I've learned more and more about the program. When I first started, I, I had one channel, I had one track, and 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 then maybe maybe another one, maybe two, and one was guitar and one was voice, and that was it. And that was fine. You know, that's the thing. Start off small, start with even just do one track and just play guitar and sing at the same time. Like, and, and that's the only way you're going to learn. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was, um, I'll stop sharing with you for a second. Um, I wanted to show you sort of how I've made some of the parts. So, because I don't have a drum kit in this room, basically, uh, all I have, I've got some bongos, um, I've got shaker, which I love, um, I use it quite a lot. Um, this tambourine is probably the one that you heard, really apologetic if that's really loud in your headphones or whatever, but this thing is supposed to be on your foot and I love holding it and smacking it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I use that one quite a lot. If I'm making a kick drum sound, uh, basically my uh, way of doing this, which is really weird, is I use my hip and obviously the microphone's here and I just go like this. And that's my kick. <laughs> so I, I do that. When I've recorded it, I, I'll show you. Say I've just recorded that. I'm going to screen share again. Um, I would go say this is this is the kick drum, for instance, I would then, you know, I'm clicking on this, it's highlighted, it comes up here, this is your mixer, and it says compressor um, and channel EQ. With these two, you can just change whatever, like you can make it sound as crazy as you want it to. If, if I clicked on this compressor here, um, you know, it, it comes up with all sorts of stuff. You can use, you can use preset things. I could go into drums because it's a drum that I'm trying to create. Um, and then just what am I trying to create? I'm trying to create a kick. There you go. Rock kick, click on that. And it just sets some, I don't even, I don't have no idea what this is. You know, this is just absolutely like, what is VCA FET? I have no idea but it just does something. You've just got to play around, rock kick. Okay, uh, we could try, um, you, we could try live drums. 
Um, there's so many different things. Just just look through and experiment. Um, and again, EQ, I'll show you what that looks like. Um, you can go up here to manual, go to drums again, we're trying to make drums um, and, and find kicks, refresh kick. I think some of the other ones I used were like low end kick, you know, and then I've just looped it basically. So I've looped the channel and that's my beat all the way through. So it's like, you know, do you need a drum kit? You can just make stuff, you know, as soon as you've got your beat and then you start bringing in your shakers. I even the other day was making um, a snare drum and I was using my leg. So I was going like that, you know, like simple or I was doing like quite a country song. Like anything, if you can play it in time and you set your metronome, um, you can you can just create anything. It's amazing. It's so good. Um, so yes, what was I up to now? So um, yeah, okay. I wanted to talk about uh, original music. Obviously, I've you know spoken about my covers album, but um, just a really you know quick um, introduction to kind of songwriting because I'm going to be like running some songwriting clinics as well. Um, and songwriting is one of the things I've been teaching um, online as well as guitar. Um, so if you're a beginner guitar player and you want to learn more as well, then, you know, I'm happy to help out. Um, but for songwriting, it's been great. I write all my own music as well. Um, and, and things, it's been interesting thinking about structures of songs and hooks, um, and, and trying to find hooks that will hit people straight away. Um, things that, you know, like taking apart a song that you really like from an artist that you really like. And thinking how did they do that like what's the structure what's the thought process um most ideas unfortunately have all have already been done you know that that's the thing um but we can learn from them and we can expand and be inspired by that um i was just going to show you i'm going to get my guitar quickly um a song that i wrote uh, a few years ago um about it's about my mum actually but just little things it's, it's a song called home you can you can find it on spotify and spotify unfortunately uh, and itunes home um it's in a, it's in um dad gad tuning so it's like really nice detuned open tuning it's beautiful um so instantly for me that's a winner it's really nice to play with different tuning on guitar if you can and if you want to learn about that as well i'm happy to help totally i, I love it absolutely love it um but just structures of songs you know i thought i'll play you kind of half the song you can hear the different structures hear where it lifts up trying to get the chorus to lift um the verse you know quite quite far down just a bit of dynamic really comes in home that note home won't you come home you know and everything else is like oh to the one who taught me how you've got 
a good structure. Then there's a middle eight, um, just some different chords. Uh, I can remember how to play it. It's using middle eights to build up to the chorus again. The chorus should be the highlight of the song. Um, that's always what I want to say. You know, when you're writing a hook, write a hook that's normally higher. I think if you're stuck, make everything else quite low and, um, or you know, just yeah, just low, and then kind of have it. If you want to have a bridge in there, st start building up. Um, but the chorus should be, hook, you know, just one hook. Da or however many oxes you want but as long as you've got something in there um even something falling da, 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 you know won't you come home for the summer home it's just nice having that movement um yeah i think that's kind of it from me really i'm i'm up for some some questions if if you're up for it james i'm always up for questions ali that was beautiful so thank you so much for doing that i'm actually carrying on from that question then like when you're obviously going to record music and put it down you've obviously probably done a bit of songwriting or at least played it through how do you then know what you're going to record first so what's your process of going from writing to then recording how do you manage that um i think the best way for me is i kind of get the guitar down um i i get the guitar down first and then i just try and sing over the top of it um, that's one way or the other way is I will just set up one track on logic, like I showed you earlier. Um, and I, and I would just play the whole thing, um, singing and playing at the same time, use it as a guide. Um, and then I would go back to it. Um, I'd probably play to a click as well, just to keep me in time and then try, you know, when, when it's playing, like try and do little things. What can I hear, you know, around it, try and set up the kick drum, which is this, that's kind of like, you know, you can easily just do that, bring that in and out. I kind of, I play everything. I just layer things up from there. Um, and if I'm stuck, I go away for half an hour, have a cup of tea, <laughs> let my my brain forget about the song and then come back again. Yeah. That's awesome. So would, is it like slowly with the building? Is it, did you find, especially making it home, was it you just were grabbing random things and occasionally or just very much as spontaneous whilst listening back to it where you wanted to add stuff? Or was there sometimes you knew a certain song you like, I know the Bee Gees use harmonies all the time, so you're like, actually, I need a lot of harmonies to play reference to that? Or I think it was spontaneous. I think um, because I envisaged like a whole band on it and I didn't know, I didn't know that I was going to be buying some equipment to record at home. Um, and I just thought, what can I do to recreate sounds? Um, and I'm still not there. You know, there's so much you can use. You know, it, people even say about <clears throat> radiators, you know, the little grill on the top, if you get a pen and just sort of go along the top, you know, things like that or spoons. Um, you know, I actually, I recorded actually with this notebook that I'm using at the moment. This, this I sat on my lap and just, it's, you know, things like that. There, there's so many things to find, but um, yeah, I didn't really, I didn't, I didn't know. It was, it was totally spur of the moment, and each track is so different. Some sometimes because of, because of that album, there were eight songs, and I just chose covers that I I grew up listening to and things that I wanted to play because I wanted it to be fun. I, I did it for me. I didn't do it for anyone else. I did it. I did it to make a bit of an income because times have been hard obviously for for musicians um but i did it because i, I love the songs and i and yeah it was funny because at the beginning of recording the album i was so such a novice on on this computer i had no idea and you can really see hear that sometimes through the album you you know which song i did first or in my in my eyes i can i think i 
yeah, I wasn't that far gone when I recorded that song. Um, so yeah, that's, yeah. I, mean, I would like to say uh, you can't hear that, and I won't, you know, won't make you break down which order you did it, in, just yeah. in case people want to listen to it. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> um, but but I think I think that's interesting though, because obviously it has been a very difficult time for in creative industries in general, but especially musicians and. I know there was positive news that the Glastonbury and Leeds, uh, not Glastonbury, sorry, Reading and Leeds have announced they're going forward, obviously, which is kind of a sense of live music coming back. But I wondered, like, doing something like this for fun and kind of expanding to recording yourself, did you feel quite empowered over that? Because you talked about earlier, your earlier career, about being lots of producers and everything like that. So in a way, obviously, nobody wanted this to happen. It's been an awful time. But was it quite empowering to sort of take complete ownership to a certain degree of it. it it was um yeah i think i think it's just really hit home for me that you can do it without these people um you know and and these no offense to them some of them are really great but these big shot managers and people like that you know a lot of them aren't cracked out to to be you know what they what they think they are um and and doing something like this where you can have complete um creative control is great you can do it in your own time you've got no you know, you set yourself deadlines. The only thing I have struggled with, and I think everyone does, is motivation. You know, we all we're all suckers for it, especially being musicians, creative people. You know, anyone really, unless you work for somebody, it's it's very difficult. And when, you know, the thing about recording in your bedroom, your spare bedroom, is that you know you're you're at home, so it's very easy to get distracted. Um, but yeah, I I, I think it's I've just loved it. I've loved you know having it as my project and when it's done you feel the feeling you get is like wow i i did that you know it's it's amazing was your house never cleaner when you're meant to be recording the album that's always well i'm always trying to do creative work so i need to get done i ended up cleaning everything but that's just that's just me yeah i agree before we had this webinar i did all the washing up and it was (laughs) yeah it was great (laughs) (laughs) well that's great. Some people have asked asking some questions, which is fantastic. So thank you for that. And guys, if you want to throw questions for Ali, anything you want to talk through, throw it in the Q and A section. It's down at the bottom of your screens. But I'm going to go to Scott first. Who thanks you for sharing? It's been really insightful and helpful. So it's great to have you here, Scott. Thank you for that. Um, they are asking, how easy have you found it reaching new audiences over lockdown, and what different ways have you found worked best? That's a good question. Um, I I've actually found, which is really weird that lockdown has kind of helped me in that aspect i think because everything is online um if you're clever enough with social media to make posts um uh, and ask people for advice as well on social media what should i be posting to get the engagement um you know that's helped me in in a big way i think i've I basically started to um record videos live videos of me playing um i did the, there's this app called acapella as well which is really useful um and you can just basically film yourself playing lots of different instruments and it puts it all together and you just play play over yourself and it makes this awesome video and i've been making videos like that which have been grabbing people's attention um and you know people want to i think because of what's happened with the pandemic and and the industry the, the music industry people have wanted to help so they, they've kind of shared more things they've like they engaged more they they if you you've got to be clever though it's like you can't just i know i know it's been a difficult time and a lot of people have sat back and not done anything which is totally fine you know there's no like right or wrong but for me i've been you know thinking of ways like oh i'm gonna make some t-shirts i'm gonna i've been making candles you know alex Hart candle this is how crazy it's gotten guys um you know just things just little inventive ways um to reach people and and um I th- yeah it's just being clever if, if people are sat on their phone all day anyway scrolling 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 it's like use that time set up a facebook page or like on your artist facebook page like write a post about what you're doing share it on there you know little things like that make videos of you playing music that's what people want to see 
um you know it's just i've just seen that where can i buy an alex hart candle and that's hilarious um they they will be out soon <laughs> you'll be able to get them from my website <laughs> but not yet um thank you for asking though um yeah um I'm, what was the last bit of that question have i answered that question i think you have it was, it was talking of but what ways have you found best reaching new audiences is that the kind of thing with online world though because obviously it can sometimes feel like when you're scrolling it's like digital graffiti someone wants to describe it as it's hard to cut through the noise what have you found works best to kind of get people to take it from dare I say a scroll to a, a listen how do you how do you find that works best oh it's so difficult isn't it um it's like hit and miss I think Some, sometimes I I get it right I mean I think the thing that um people have stopped to look at on my posts are like pictures if you get a really good picture of yourself or um, you know, I'm, I'm not really one to be sort of like loads of makeup and I'll sit and take selfies. I hate it. I absolutely hate that. Sometimes I'll, I'll think, oh, I look quite nice today and I'll take something. And then, you know, unfortunately, that's just what it's like, isn't it? People, um, sometimes the dodgy people say something <laughs> which you don't want to have. Um, or, you know, the creepy people. But then you get the other people that hopefully will stop and and take take notice or a silly picture you know something that's hilarious or a funny picture of you or just yeah that it's, it's think about it for you what would you stop and see you know if you're looking through what would make you stop you know something cool something colorful you know the trees i don't know something um bright you know it's it's it, it's totally hit and miss it's so difficult depends what your brand is as well you know what what music you are everything with the, the online videos though I'll, this, I'll move on to Alana's question in a second um but with the online videos do you think you will continue them obviously probably not to the same extent you're doing now but when you go back into when the music industry does open up and you're going back touring do you think you will continue those yeah do you um, mean videos? the online the online gigs you mean yeah, the online gigs occasion. Do you think you will continue those? Because it does obviously hit a different audience that potentially, depending where you are, you might not be, because you can engage Manchester and Singapore theoretically at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Well, when it first came out, I was so against it. And I just, I was upset because I thought, you know, this is how it's going. We used to do a gig in the B bar and then they'd be like, no, we're going to put a camera up and live stream it. And I was like, what are you doing? You know, I've just, I couldn't believe it. And actually since doing my gigs here, it's gone so well, you know, I've reached people in New York, but all across America, uh, Germany, France, like, you know, everywhere. Um, so I think I'll definitely do it because it, and it, it's nice. It's been nice sitting in here, talking to people all around the world. And, and I think those live streams again, have, have pushed to those audiences. They, they share it, they, you can talk to them. They love that, you know, it's like, it's interaction, isn't it? Say to people, what, what song do you want me to cover? You know, if they want you to request, to, to request a song, they'll message you. I've had an influx of songs that I just, they're just impossible to learn. But, you know, that's a really, again, going back to the first question, that's like another good way of, you know, getting, getting that interaction there asking them what do you want what do you want from me you know i'm here like i'm bored i want to play music what do you want to listen to um but yeah i'll, I'll definitely continue doing live streams it sucks. It's <laughs> no it's good it's good the, 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 um just so you know Ali actually will be playing in one of our live streams that's coming up so keep an eye on the Barbican website for that um that's really great so thank you scott for that question that was really in Interesting. Um, Alana's asked about your writing process. Um, so it's great to have you here, Alana. And she's asked, is it lyrics or beats first? And how do you find a subject to write about? Um, obviously, you can go into detail about this, but we also, Ali is going to do a whole dedicated workshop on songwriting, uh, which is part of Rebels Music. So check out the link in the chat for that. But yeah, how, how, what is the first thing you do? Do you go with subject lyrics or is it depends what song, depends what's going on? I think, um, yeah, normally I would write lyrics first and then a lot of the time there's no subject because I just kind of, I, I use this process that Daisy and I, um, who also works for the theatre um, and, and probably a lot of other people actually that work for the theatre, I learned from Daisy, it's, it's a free writing skill. Um, so we put on some music with no words and then just 
like 10 minutes, write whatever you, you feel, you know, don't cross anything out, don't stop um, and, and just see what comes out. That's a really good way of doing it. And then you can go back and, and take things out, but it's so interesting to see where your brain goes. Um, I think that's a really good way. Sometimes I will have a subject um, and it's normally things that have happened to me, past relationships, um, you know, family members, kind of quite personal things. Um, I w I'm not really one to go and write about the birds and the bees outside unless it's a free write, really. Um, you know, that's just not my style, but I mean, I love that, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, recently I have been have been trialing writing beats first and doing it on Logic, coming up with something really cool and then trying to jam over it with some chords and then just seeing what comes out. But it's so different, you know, it's so hit and miss. But I think, you know, for me generally, I'll write some lyrics first on, you know, I've, I've got some here, um, just pages of them. And they're kind of, they come out like that when I free write. So just they're in no order. It's just a load of whatever. Um, and then I will come up with something on the guitar, maybe four chords for the verse, really simple. And then another four chords for the chorus and then try and sing them over that. And if they if they if I can come up with something, take out some lines, try and get, you know, some some kind of structure there. And then after I've got that simple structure of chords and lyrics I can go back and change things and make the chords more interesting or you know if as long as you've got that basic structure that first you know you can always go back and change and record it on your phone use voice memos on your phone that's a really good good way of remembering what you've done because <laughs> you you will change it quite a few times probably or you might write a song in five minutes which is great but yeah yeah that was really great no, thank you for that um I was going to ask you a question because obviously you played us on Logic the raw, you know, what you called raw, and then you said you gave it to Jer. I'm going to say Jeremiah. I'm going to get was it Jeremiah? J Josiah. Josiah. But I like That's, Jeremiah. That's brilliant. <laughs> it's very very close uh, biblical name. Yeah. Um, uh, so, you, <laughs> so you sent it to Josiah. Sorry, yeah. you sent it to Josiah to kind of, um, as you called it, kind of smooth it out and kind of. And obviously with balancing and stuff. So how did you meet Josiah? Or if people are at home who don't know someone who is able to do that, how would you go about meeting someone, engaging someone to do that work for you? Talk through about that process. Yeah, so Josiah is, um, he owns a studio called Momentum Studios, which is in Plimpton, Plimpton. Um, and he has he has just a really nice setup there. What I what he does is a thing called mixing and mastering. Um, and obviously he you can go there and record if you want to, but obviously then you do pay the studio fees. Um, you know, I've I've known him for years, but you you send him your work basically, like I've done here, you know, I'd I'd send him the whole project. Um, and then he would just go through, tidy things up, put put some really nice effects on there. Um, the mixing and mastering isn't essential, like you don't have to have it, um, but it's just, you know, it's worth it if you want to release good quality music, um, you know, and it won't cost you crazy, crazy money, even if you, you know, did it track by track or something. Um, it's just worth it if you want it to be played on Spotify or um, any kind of you know radio station or anything like that you know you like I said you don't have to do it if you, if your funds are really tight it's not it's not a necessity um but it, it is just it, it helps I think and it also it, it kind of yeah it gives, it, it's also nice to sometimes hand over a project and get something back from someone else having that input isn't it having it just is. that extra person because I can imagine especially at the moment it's even more of a lonelier process because it is literally yourself in your bedroom that's doing it. the work yeah you can vibe off someone else you know and it was nice when I sent the whole album to him he was he was he just loved it and it was so nice hearing his feedback and coming from you know a, a, a guy that records music and you know knows his stuff like and I was just like what do I do here <laughs> I've got no idea um or I'd FaceTime and be like I don't know you know that, that's the thing it's like oh I think um everyone um who's watching this will have a friend who knows more about these programs ask them for help you know go on to even go on facebook write a status like i'm stuck with logic like there'll be someone 
that can FaceTime you and just talk you through a few simple things. It's really worth asking people. You'll be so surprised what people can offer. And and actually, you might even have a friend that can do some mixing for you for free. <laughs> you know, it's like, and, and who wants to do it for free? Like, don't don't be shy to ask. It's, it's yeah. I'd say that it's just great advice for any creative industry. It's always worthwhile asking. I think we get this thing of big people or someone who seems experienced that is unavailable to ask. Most people are the loveliest people in the world and they just want to share what they know. So yeah. that's really great advice just to ask. Yeah. And if you want to, we are running sessions. We, we work, we're we working one of the Rebels Music practitioners is called Benny Lau Crispin, who runs Granary Studios. Um, and he's doing a whole thing on Logic and Ableton. So we can there's a whole session on that as well. Um, so again, we are now here with Rebels Music to help as well. Send these questions through. We've got our email, which will be posted in the chat called rebels at barbacantheatre.co.uk. If you've got any questions, send it through. I'll pass it on to the guys who know because I won't try and answer it because I don't know that much. But I'll pass <laughs> it on to these guys who know a lot more and they'll be able to help out. But no, I think that's a really great point. Um, Caitlin, hi Caitlin, how are you doing? Uh, it has asked, um, and she says, really inspiring, so thank you for that. She's also asked, how do you know if a song you've written is finished? Do you ever find your songs evolve and change over time? Oh, that's a good question, Kat. That's a good um, I, I think I get to a point where I'm just bored of it. <laughs> One of them. Um, no, not, not always, but sometimes uh, I, th I think sometimes I'm just, I, I don't know, I'm just happy with it. There's always something else you can do. There's always, you know, it's never, a song is never finished, is it? Because you can change it in an in infinite amount of ways. But I think I get to a point where I'm like, I'm happy with that. You know, I, I'm not one as well to sit and, you know, go back over things and over things and over things, because I do get bored. I, I'm one of those people that will just like, you know, I'll start doing something and I'm like, I'm bored now. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, which is so annoying because it's like, you know, you want to get really stuck into something, but I, my brain just won't let me do it. And I'm sure that's the same for a lot of other people. Um, but I mean, yeah, I think, you know, I won't let a song go on for years and years and then keep changing things. Um, the best way, if you're unsure, is maybe try and gig it a couple of times and see what the reaction is. You know, don't be afraid to try new stuff out and about and or play it to a friend, play it, you know, and see how it feels when you play it live. That's that's the thing, because it, it changes it completely. And, I, and it's also about the response, isn't it? So sometimes you can get in your own head about any creative project. You kind of go, oh, oh, this isn't. And you get so stuck there that sometimes yeah. you just need to get it out. We do need to share it. Yeah. And always do that with people you trust. It's like with. Um, Josiah, I was going to call him Jeremiah again, Josiah. <laughs> we should call him Jeremiah today. Uh, yeah, we should call him Jeremiah now, which makes it easier. Um, like, again, it's like passing it over is, again, that help, isn't it? It's ongoing, oh, what about this? What about this? Because that might be the simple thing that takes it from being brilliant, from you thinking, oh, I'm not sure it's complete, to actually, I'm really happy with that. Exactly. And if you, you know, I mean, at the moment I'm writing and I play it to my boyfriend, you know, and he's he's not really musical at all, but he's really critical, which is great, you know, and he'll tell me exactly what he thinks of it. And and it's like, don't don't be scared if someone doesn't like it. You know, a lot of things I write, he goes, oh, I'm not really into that. I'm like, OK, you know, don't like take it on the chin. You know, we can't all write bangers all the time. Like you, you're right. Like sometimes a hundred songs and, and get one that you like. I think that was what the Beatles or something, they wrote a hundred songs and would pick one. I, I can't remember if it was them, but that's crazy. You know, I mean, it's for me, that's, I don't write a hundred songs and then pick one, but you know, it's like, yeah, don't be afraid to, um, to take criticism because, you know, but it's great asking your loved ones, great asking people that don't have any musicality because they're the audience. They're the people that you're trying to impress. You know, even ask your mum. Yeah. Definitely. We, um, I'm not sure, but it's always when you see like kind of musicals and stuff, and you see the amount of like a Disney film or something like that, the amount of film stuff they cut or even didn't even make to recording stage is ridiculous because it is about that. We've got a question here. Say, do you inspire to collaborate collaborate with anyone specific? Someone, yeah. Mm, that's a good question. Is there anyone you, or someone new you want to work with or how do you get into the collaborations and kind of building those relationships like Seth Lakeman and others? 
Um, well, I de there's definitely people that I aspire to collaborate with. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I can't even think off the top of my head like one person now. But um, I mean, there's there's a local. Well, actually, okay, yeah, I've got one. I've got one. Um, a group that I always have gone on about. If anyone has seen me before, um, a group called the Staves. They're, they're three sisters. Obviously, I've got no way in because they're sisters, and I would just be the odd one out. But um, I have dreams that one of the staves has fallen ill for a gig, and then I'm like, "Hi!" I know all the words and all the harmonies. Um, they're amazing. They're three part harmony um, folk um, trio from Watford. Again, I think because they're family members, they've just got this gel and it's just amazing. They all play instruments. It's just beautifully recorded folk music, basically. Um, and yeah, I, I've I've taken a lot from them, uh, a lot of inspiration from those guys. So I think that, yeah, definitely I'd love to collaborate with them. Um, you know, I've been inspired by so many different people. I, I love soul music. I love Stevie Wonder. He's a huge part of my my listening and um and james taylor you know people like that I'm, I'm really into sort of the classics um i don't know i've got no idea who's in the charts at the moment um you know I, but i yeah i'm not saying they're bad you know but it's just it's i i just like the older style really for me um and and yeah going back to seth and martin those kind of things just happened because i was working in studios um in a, a, in particular a studio in uh, called middle farm i don't know if you've heard of it it's a recording studio in newton abbott mm. um and i was just doing some work there for a band like some back um, backing vocal stuff and then i met martin through the studio so just little thing you know it's it's not what you know it's who you know if you get a little session here and there and then they recommend you for something else and then it kind of goes around like that and and seth actually was <laughs> quite a funny story because he I've known him just around the circuit in Plymouth for a few years but he came into the bee bar when I was working in the bee bar and he said oh what are you doing next February do you want to go on a tour and I was like yeah <laughs> I never I never played with with you at all you know but that's that's how that started he said I'm looking for a female singer do you you know I'll send you the tracks and we'll have a jam he said I'll bring the guitar to the bee bar and we'll have a jam and I was like okay <laughs> Um, and that was like the next day, you know, and he just swanned in with his guitar and there was a restaurant full of people at lunchtime and I'm working behind the bar and I have to sneak out and play in the mez, you know, with him and everyone's looking at us and it was just like, yeah, it's crazy. So that's how that happened. Amazing. Yeah. That, that's, that's great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've got a couple more questions. We've probably got time after these two questions for about Two more guys, so if you want to get your questions in, here's your last chance. But um, so, Anonymous Cindy, lovely to have you here, um, has just said, out of interest, can busking help a lot to get noticed? Mm. Busking. I, I, I've done it a few times. I had a few bad experiences of it. One, because I've, I've got a dog and I, I took my dog and this guy, for some reason, told me to take my dog home. Um, I was like, what? She's outside, you know, it was a lovely, beautiful day. Um, and he was all dressed in tweed and like from head to toe, just really horrible man shouting at me in the street. It was really, really weird. Um, but yeah, I've done it a few times. I've done it probably about six or seven times. But I, to be honest, I don't think it's all it's cracked out to be. I think a lot of people do just walk past you um, unless you're doing something really um, energetic and you've got the energy and the drive to want to do it, great, you know, if, and if you're busking in a good place, in a good location, you know, a good town that people appreciate it, and then that's great. I think it, it can be 50-50 helpful and, and the other side not so much because you, you do, unfortunately, you bump into a few weirdos um you know you'll get people that you know you want to touch your guitar do you know what i mean it's like you don't know who's there like you you know you've got to be very careful i think especially now it's it's like it's not what it used to be i don't think and you know i know what i'm like when i'm out in town you know sometimes i'll stop and listen to someone busking but normally i'm in a rush you know so i don't listen and 
you know, in, and you can be a bit disheartened if you only come home with 20 quid and you, you've been there for six hours, you know, that's it's just, sometimes you'll, you'll do it and earn a hundred quid. I think I earned 70 quid one day and I was really chuffed with that. And I've been out for four hours, you know, and that's great. I mean, if you can do that, but I, I wouldn't say it's the, the best thing. I wouldn't. Um, I think there's, for me, there's a, like busking. I think it should be great. We should do a bit of busking with a bit of outside performance, isn't there? Where there's a bit more, yeah. like, see the audience. I think that's really good, trying to find the balance between that and live gigs and live kind of outside performances. And sometimes if you're doing busking at part of a bigger festival, because, like, if you're doing busking on the Royal Mile oh, yeah. uh, for, for, like, part of Edinburgh Fringe, because it's all yeah. a bit more, they've got a really welcome atmosphere. That can be, obviously, that's a really big example. But, again, it's about... Well, like all the things I think you would say, because what you're describing is sometimes is traveling around with going on tours with big people supporting people or tours yourself, and then sometimes playing at a gig in a pub, like what you're saying earlier. It's about finding that balance, wouldn't you say? Definitely. You're right as well. If you're like part of a festival, you know, like even Sidmouth Folk Festival as well, things like that, you know, busk, every, you should be busking because that's how, that's what people are out to see. But I think if you're on your own in Plymouth City Centre on a dark December night you know I would just say like that's when I that's my experience of it you know I haven't done the other side but yeah you're, you're totally right James definitely yeah that's great um okay our final two questions unless anyone wants to throw some more in the Q&A we've probably got time for three more um I, this, I'm going to do two quick one first which is a very quick one which is more fun a big crowd at a festival or an intimate gig at the Beaver mm. Hard question. Hmm. I do like festival gigs, I think. I think that's probably what I would, yeah. I think I'd probably go for the bigger festival one, only because it's a new experience. I love the bee bar, you know, I love that vibe, but I know what to expect pretty much, um, which is why I love it as well. You know, you know it's going to be a good night, but I think with a festival, you've got the whole buzz of being there I hate mm. at a festival when you're in a rush to get to the stage and nobody knows where it is and you're on a buggy somewhere and they, they just don't care about you and you're trying to book a slot to go to the stage and put your your gear on there it's all a bit chaotic I don't enjoy that bit but when you're on that stage and you've got a really good sound system and you know you're looking out and the sun's shining and you're outside I think that you can't beat that you know that's that's like the dream it is are the organizers really that bad do they just not know where the stage is <laughs> it depends how big the festival is it's like sometimes you'll get i hate it you'll drive to the festival and they'll say oh you've got to go artist parking like, okay and then you get there and there's like, someone on the gate and they're like well who are you and you're like i'm here playing music they're like oh well i don't know about it I don't know who you are and I'm like it doesn't matter if you know who I am but you know I am here to play like you know you're paying me to be here or or we're paying you to be here um you know and you're thinking this festival wouldn't be what it is without the music that happens like they treat you so badly sometimes oh, but oh it's you just know what to expect you know nowadays and we're normally trying to sneak someone in as well and we're like yeah they're with us you know don't worry about them they're, they're just the roadie <laughs> they just want a free pass <laughs> at least i hope the roadie at least watches your gig and doesn't do it like comes in with you and goes just to, like off somewhere else oh, they, they probably normally do go off somewhere you know, getting the beers in or whatever yeah don't know <laughs> um so it is a big question. What's the best advice to offer to someone who's just starting out as a solo musician? Um, what is the most effective way to get heard? Is it recording or gigging or is it kind of a mixture of both? What, what's your best advice to someone starting out on this journey? Um, best advice? Um, I think just gig and gig and gig as much as you can. I think... Um, as a solo musician, you know, you're kind of lucky that it's just you, which is cool. You haven't got anyone else to think about, you know, it's great having a band to start with, but sometimes they can let you down, you know, if they're not as driven as you, it's a bit of a pain, especially at the start, you know, you want to be doing as much as you can. I would say gigging and gigging and gigging and playing and playing and playing is the best advice. I think recording is great. I think you should have 
a really good recording, even if it's a single, you know, get mm -hmm. one song that you're happy with, unless you can do an album, but I, I would probably start with a single or a couple of tracks. I wouldn't do a whole blown album straight away. I think you need to build up to that. Um, but I think, yeah, get a really good recording, could be at home, could be on your iPhone, you know, whatever you've got, iPads, you know, there's so many different ways to do it now. Um, you don't need to spend lots of money on it, but just play, you know, uh, play at every open mic night, play, um, you know, support musicians as well. Ring up a band and say, where are you playing? Do you need a support act? Or if you can't get a hold of them, find out where a band is playing in, in a concert hall and ring the concert hall and say, who's, who's the manager of that band um, or the promoter? Can I please speak to them because I need to play tonight? And you're probably going to have to play for no money, unfortunately, for a little while. Um, it's worth having a second job, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Um, you know, which sucks. I hate saying that, but that's the, that's the truth. You know, it's like, if you're starting out, if you're, if you're young, you know, if you're, you know, in your teens, you know, you're not probably going to need to earn lots of money at the moment. So I, I would just say, just play and play and play everywhere, any way you can. That's mm. great. Well, I'm going to quickly thank you all guys for the questions for Ali. That was fantastic. And thank you, Ali there. I'm going to quickly ask you, Annie, about Rebels Music and the other, sessions you're going to be running for the rest of the month and then I'll and then I think we'll leave it there because it's been a really insightful chat and I really thank you for that but what other sessions are you going to be running between now and the end of March so what have you got going on so it's so exciting um so I'm running a songwriting clinic which is really cool um and basically you can come to me with any song you know even if you've got a verse or a chorus or you're just a bit stuck um bring it to the session and i'll work with you one-to-one -one on it um there'll probably be a few more people in the session as well but i'll work with you one-on-one -on -one, and then we'll probably spend a bit of time working as a group to you know help each other out as well so those i think there's going to be two of the, or three of those actually um which is really really cool so keep a lookout for those um and also an introduction to songwriting which again is more me waffling on. Um, I'll show you kind of my songwriting process um, and what I'm doing at the moment. So I'm, I think I'm I'm going to be breaking down the new song that I've just written for you, uh, bit by bit, taking things apart. You know, and I don't really I haven't really shown this song to anyone. I'm a bit sort of like I shouldn't really be showing it, but it would be great to show you guys um, the writing process and just what was going through my head because it's quite current at the moment. Um, you know, and hopefully spark off a few ideas with you, you know, see what you want to do, ask, ask questions, answer questions. Um, yeah, it's going to be really fun. Uh, it's going really to be amazing. And then there's lots of other different stuff from introducing to beatboxing and how to do logic, um, um, the vocal gyms, how to overcome stage fright, how to explore different rhythms from cross cultures to time signatures songwriting clinics it's just amazing and they're all free um on our, and you can sign up through the barbican theater website the links in the chat and really get involved as much as you possibly can because there are limited spaces on those um annie alex hart thank you so much for all that that was amazing um it's worth saying to you guys thank you so much for coming and listening um always oh, oh it's really great that we offer these sessions for free but obviously if you are able to give a donation that'd be greatly appreciated because we do pay the artists to be here with us as we see that's the right thing to do but we want to keep it free access to you guys and we are a charity and we're trying to give as much as we possibly can for as little so you guys are only making a small donation so if you could give us two pound three pound four pound that would be so greatly appreciated there's a qr code that will appear on the end of the screen after this chat if you want to go check out any more of the rebels master classes we've got them all on our youtube check page currently um we've got loads more coming up as i said on thursday evenings as well as the rebel sessions which happen throughout monday to wednesday which Ali's a practitioner on them as well as well as the, also the new rebels music sessions to go check out so keep an eye out on the page keep engaged thank you so much for attending big round of applause to alex hart and wonderful we, we can't wait to hear a new song uh and new album when that comes and we hopefully will see you all again very very soon so have a wonderful evening and catch you then Thank you, guys. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers.